Welcome to My Story 2, page 13. Let's start with the introduction and read together. Welcome to four new quests that will take you around God's world. Your first adventure will be starting soon. This book of adventure is going to help you learn about something called social studies. Social studies is about people and places around the world, including your own neighbors and your own family. We will talk about what people eat, where the food comes from, how governments, here governments, are set up, the symbols on flags of different countries. So for example, we can have many flags on a country, could look like this. This is a flag. And what they mean. How God teaches us to love the people of the world like he does and much more. Before we get started on the first quest, let's talk really quickly about the maps. What is a map? Maps are pictures that mirror the real world in small ways. They are drawings of what the world looks like from above, so you can find different places you want to go. So on this map, for example, where are we? We are in Korea, here. So we can find our country here. Okay. You might make a map of your house, often called a blueprint, every room like a square or rectangle with doorways showing how to go from room to room. Then maybe you could make a map of your own neighborhood, then your city, then your state, then your country, and finally the world, like this, showing mountains, rivers, lakes, and more. A map of the world is like the map of your house, with each country like a room, only showing much, much more. Earth is fairly round, like a ball, like this. But maps of the earth are usually made flat, like this, unless you have a globe. Now page 14. Long ago, when you needed to find a city or a building in that city, you might use a compass. Here is a compass to guide you. The compass was first invented around AD 1100 in China. It is designed to point north. North is up here so one can figure all other directions south east and west south is here south east and west an astrolabe is an amazing device first invented by the ancient greek people it is showed how the sun moon planets and stars moved across the sky helping you to find out where you were. So like that, you could know wherever you were in some place, like in this city. Now we have electronics in our cars or on our phones that can tell us where we are and where you need to go. So if you are in this city and you have, for example, a GPS in the car, you know how to go here because the GPS can show you. It can show you how to get to point A, from point A to point B. So ready for your first quest? By now, you might know that a quest is a journey, an adventure where you can discover or uncover things. 
So remember this, a quest, a quest is a journey or an adventure. We will often use this word quest in this book. You might learn some things about yourself. Some words from other languages people speak around the world and about ways God teaches us to be wise by looking at his created world around us. Throughout this book, you will be writing your own story. You will write it or have your teacher write it with you every Friday. Also, on Fridays, you'll gather the yellow highlighted words for your word collector. You can write these on any pieces of paper you like, but three times five cards can make a really easy way to write them out, to store them in a box or a bag for review times. Write the words on the card so you know how to spell them for your review time. Now this might look a little different because we are doing it online. But anyway, ready? Here we go. Let's turn to page 17 now. From this page, you will need to grab your quest collector card. So this page, page 15. In this quest collector card, there are 10 questions. And for each question, for example, number one, which is the biggest country in the world? Maybe you know, maybe you don't know, but you will find the answer in the next pages. So maybe the answer is in this page or maybe it's in the next page. So you need to keep this with you so that you can write the answer when you find it. You can also grab the map on page, on page 16. On this map, you will see where we are going with the book. So we will start with the USA and then go here. You can follow our journey if you have this map. So let's start reading. Time to get ready because your year of adventure is beginning. Grab your quest one map, this one that we talked about, so you can follow your journey each step of the way. In the first week, we'll be riding in a canoe. What is a canoe? A canoe is this kind of boat. Okay, so watch for canoes each day and make sure you strap on your life jacket. Can you see any life jacket here? They are all wearing a life jacket. This red one, this is a life jacket. So if they fall in the water, they will not sink because they are wearing a life jacket and this will help them to stay above the water. Okay. And as they say in Brazil, before an adventure, boa viagem, which means good trip. Our canoe might be similar to the ones used by the Polynesians when they first found Hawaii. Hawaii is a group of islands so what does that look like? An island is a little piece of land like this. In Hawaii, there might be, for example, some palm trees on the island, like this. Do you recognize this tree? So you might find these kinds of trees in Hawaii. And around the islands, there is water. So here we have two islands. One, two. These islands are pretty small, but there can also be very big islands surrounded by water. So Hawaii is a group of islands. It is uh, that became the 50th state of the United States in 1959. So it's a group of islands, but it is part of the United States. 
Have you ever met a person who lived outside of your state or country? Almost immediately, you might see small differences in how they talk, act and think. Do you want to know when a lot of those differences began? Well, let's look at something in the Bible that happened a very long time ago at the Tower of Babel. You can read the whole account in the book of Genesis 11, 1 through 9. Our ancestors were originally all from areas called the Middle East and Northern Africa, which you can see on your map. The Middle East is here and North Africa here. They were from this region. Remember, north on a map is up, south is down, east is right and west is left. At that time, people were all united as one culture. One day, however, the people grew proud and decided to build a tower to heaven. So they built a really big tower right till heaven. You could see the clouds from this tower. It was very big, okay? Very, very big. Okay. They built it very big because they wanted to be like God. Do you think God was happy about this? No, this upset God and he stopped them from building the tower by making them speak different languages. Do you think they could understand each other now? Let's turn to the next page. The people could no longer talk to each other then, only to those who spoke their language. Okay, so they couldn't understand each other, even though maybe they tried to say something, but the other person couldn't understand, so they, they answered with a different language. So then they just became confused and had no idea what each other were saying. They couldn't understand. Okay, these folks could be thought of in some ways as the First Nations. So the first countries, the people groups who spoke the same language all went together to another place of the world to live in a village or city. Okay, so if you spoke the same language as her, then everyone went with her to the same place. But if you spoke the same language as him, then you go with him to the same place. It's partly because of this that our modern world is here and why we don't all think and act alike. Your own town and country are some of the many that have come together since the Tower of Babel. So understanding the beauty and uniqueness of people around the world is important to better appreciate God's whole world. Here you see another picture of the Tower of Babel which wasn't finished because God stopped them. Now, the earth has big pieces of land or areas we call continents. There are seven continents, which are North America, here, South America, here, Europe, in blue, Asia, here in yellow, Africa in red, Oceania in little darker red, and Antarctica down here. Okay. On the six other continents are found all the countries of the world because we won't be visiting Antarctica, okay? Only these continents. Some countries are very big and some are very small. What makes a country is being under a single government or leadership. So here's a government 
and this is the United States. The United States, even though it has many states like this, you see them, it only has one government. Okay, so one government makes one country. Here, this is not the United States, this is Europe. And in Europe, there are many countries, okay? There's one here, here there's France, England, see many countries. So in Europe, if we count all the countries, there will be more than one government, okay? There will be one government here, one government here and here. Okay, there will be one one government for each country. Okay. So, the smallest country is called Vatican City and is actually inside the city of Rome. So Rome is in Italy, so Vatican is here, the smallest country. The biggest country in the world is Russia, which covers 11 time zones and takes eight days to travel across by train. Do you see Russia? Russia is this huge country. Oh, isn't that on our quest collector card, this question? Let's read number one again on page 15. Which is the biggest country in the world? Oh, well, here it says the biggest country in the world is Russia. So on your quest collector card, you can write Russia here. Okay, you can write Russia. Great. So that's it. We can move to the next page. We are now on page 19. Let's read. Let's go on over to Hawaii to better understand people in the Pacific Islands. Come on! Hawaii is a group of over a hundred volcanic islands in the Pacific Oceans. There have been people on these islands for over a thousand years. In the early days of Hawaiian government, there, they had chiefs that ruled over the four main islands. At that time, they settled the land, but no one owned it. So if you look at page 20 of your book, you can see pictures of the Hawaiian islands. You see, here's an island, here's an island. So there are many islands. But if you are on the island, then it might not look so small. Okay, it's a little bigger. It even Maybe even in some places you can't see the ocean or barely can see. Okay, so this is what Hawaii looks like. Really beautiful, right? Yes, and they are, ma they are made of a hundred volcanic islands. So they are made with volcanoes. Do you know what volcanoes are? Volcanoes are these little bit scary uh, things that you can find and sometimes they explode and and there is lava that comes from the volcano so these islands are made with this kind of volcano activity time the english language alphabet has 26 letters the Hawaiian language alphabet has only 12 letters. There are five vowels, just like English, A, E, I, O, U. And there are seven consonants, H, K, L, M, N, P, W. Let's look at some Hawaiian words. How do you say child in Hawaiian? You say keiki, keiki. Keiki means child. It's the same meaning for the same word. 
What is a student? You are a student. In Hawaiian, they would call you Haumana. Haumana. Does it sound like student? No, right? It doesn't sound like student. Haohana. How do you say teacher? So, if you call me teacher, but if you were from Hawaii, you might call me kumu. Kumu. How about something simple like hello, goodbye, love, or peace? In Hawaii, they say aloha. Okay, aloha. Now let's look at talk time. What do you think about saying words in another language that mean the same as certain words in English but sound totally different? So, for example, student, how, how mana? It really sounds so different, but it's the same meaning. What do you think about that? Is it weird? Or do you think it's normal? Okay, you can think about it. Now let's look at the thankful time. Say or write on a colored cardstock leaf one thing you're thankful for today. Can you think of one thing that you're thankful for today and write it on a colored cardstock leaf? I will write mine here. I am thankful for sunny mornings. So I can thank God today for sunny mornings. Now what are you thankful for today? Think about it. Let's talk about God's creation time on page 21. It's very exciting to know that God created everything there is in the world. The Bible tells us how it all happened. Then God said, let the waters abound with an abundance of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the face of the firmament of the heavens. So the birds could go and fly fly in the in the sky, okay? He told the birds to go and do that and to fly. So God created great sea creatures and every living thing that moves with which the waters abounded according to their kind and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. God was really happy with what he made. And God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters like here in the seas and let the birds multiply on the earth. So the evening and the morning were the fifth day. Then God said, let the earth bring forth the living creatures according to its kind. So cattle, here's some cattle, and creeping thing and beast of the earth, each according to its kind. Here are some of the creeping things. And so it was. And God made the beast of the earth according to its kind, cattle according to its kind, and everything that creeps on the earth according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. Genesis 1, 20 through 25. So here you can see what happened on day one. What did God create? What did God create on day two? What did he create on day three? Day four? Day five? And see who is here on day six? Yes, that's, that's us, the humankind. So if you ever get sad and down, spend time with God in his creation. So spend time outside and see what he has created. You will see the birds, you will see the cattle,
creeping things. You will see so many things. Let the beauty and joy of all he made begin to lift you up again. When you see his creation, you will be happy. It will make you joyful again. Talking time. What is something that God created that you enjoy the most? Or maybe a few things. So think about it. Is there anything that God created that you really like, that you really enjoy? For me, I really enjoy the nature. I really enjoy trees, for example. So I'll try to make a tree. I really like trees and I really like forests. I like going outside in the nature and seeing what God created. What do you like? Do you also like the nature or do you like animals? What do you like? Thankful time. Say or write on a colored cardstock leaf one thing you're thankful for today. What are you thankful for? Well, I can say that I'm thankful that I can go outside, that I can go outside and enjoy the nice weather. I can go outside and find peace in the nature. This is what I like. What are you thankful for today? Turn to page 22 now. Here we have a word find time. It says, find the following language words in the word find puzzle. Okay, here we have a few language words. So we've got eight language words. You need to find these words in this puzzle. Do you see anything? You can have a little time to check. Okay, I will show you one. And then you need to try to find the other words. Did you see this word here? Language. Oops, sorry, it comes with an S. Languages. Languages is here. So you can circle this one or highlight it and try to find the other words. You can pause the video and continue for activity time. Okay, if you finish the puzzle, let's continue. Activity time. There are thousands of languages that people speak in the world, and that's a lot. Yes, a th more than a thousand, that's a lot. But did you know that if you can say just six words, you can say hello to over two billion people? So if you can say hello in six languages, you can say hello to many people, right? And here they are. In English, it is hello. In Arabic, it is marhaba. In Chinese, it is ni hao. In Spanish, it is hola. In Hindi, it is namaste. In Russian, it is strasvujte. Okay, so they aren't all easy, but it's a start. Page 23. Flag time. What are flags? Flags are symbols of a country similar to the logo and color of a baseball or soccer team. Here you have many flags in this picture, so many flags. Each pattern and color stand for something, so that means they have a meaning. Every country in the world has a flag. You'll be seeing a lot of flags on your quests. Over the next pages, you will see many flags. 
Okay, government time. Baseball or board games without rules would be a mess. And living together with people would be a mess if not for God's laws that help us live right and help us live in peace. In this way, families are supposed to be safe places for us to grow in. Some families live on farms, like here, here is a farm. Or in cities with many buildings that are a part of a country. Each country has a government that sets up the rules or laws. A government is made up of people who rule other people and run the country. Okay, so I can quickly draw a government symbol. Okay, whoops. Okay, this is the government. And in the government, there are people. So these people are in the government and they are the ones who make the rules for the country. Okay? They rule over the country. Now, they oversee laws and taxes to fund the government's services, including provision for the poor, the military protection, and the court system. Something important to remember when talking about countries and leaders of countries is the following verses from the Bible. Therefore, I exhort first of all that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and all who are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and reverence. 1 Timothy 2, 1, 2. Okay, so what does it say? We need to give thanks. We need to be thankful for these people who are in the government and who are leading the country. We need to give thanks and we need to pray for them. They need to have God's guidance when they are leading the country. Talk time. What are some rules that help your family stay peaceful? Can you think of any rules? Okay, if you thought of some rules, let's go on to thankful time. Say or write on a colored cardstock leaf one thing you're thankful for today. What are you thankful for today? You can think about it and write it down. Page 24. Language time. Here you can see two pictures. And we talked about flags earlier and here they are carrying those flags. Okay, so for language time, let's learn a new word. The Italian word for your week is ciao and it means hello okay so you have a new way of saying hello ciao let's move to the next page types of governments there are many kinds of governments but through these four quests we will focus on the following five oligarchy theocracy absolute monarchy constitutional monarchy and republic. So let's look at them a little more carefully. So oligarchy. Rule by the few who are not elected by the people and who can make laws on their own. Okay, so for an oligarchy, we have a few people who are leading the country, but the people who live in the country did not choose them. And they are the ones who are making the laws. 
they are making the laws, but do you think the country is happy with these leaders? They are choosing the laws and they are governing? governing? Well, if they are not doing a good job, maybe the people will not be happy. Then we have a theocracy. Rule by a person or a group of people set to represent God. Okay, so this time for a theocracy, it could be only one person or maybe it's more people. Also, and what do they say? They say that they represent God. So they have uh, God's anointing for this. So maybe this is true, maybe not. That they are the ones who are governing the country and saying that they are doing it for God. Then the next one we have absolute monarchy. Rule by a king or queen who can generally make laws on their own. All right. So for the absolute monarchy, as it says, there is a king or queen who is governing. And this person is making the laws or the rules on their own. They can decide everything. So again, it might be good or bad, but Yes, maybe not that great. Then constitutional monarchy ruled by a king or queen with limited powers. So again, for this one, there is also a king or queen, like in the other case. But this time, the king or queen doesn't have a lot of power. So there are other people who are there too. And they are making the rules or the laws. Okay, and the last one, Republic, a representative democracy. People elect leaders presidents, parliaments, and others to make the laws. So this is what we are most used to. So for this one, it is the people who live in the country. So many people, right? Many people. They can choose who is going to be their leader or their president who will make the laws for the country. Yes, so these people are choosing the president or parliament or something else. Okay, and here are some pictures. You can see what a castle throne in Dublin looks like for the king or queen and here you can see the European Parliament in Tra Strasbourg. Quite big, right? There are many people in this parliament. Activity time. Do you know what your state capital is? And do you know when your state became a state? Look in the back and find out, then write it out here. So you can take time to find the answer to this question and write down here. If you finished, we can move to the next page. Page 26. Copy work time. Copy the words given in the space provided on the lines. Do you know what all the words mean? World, peace, created, good, flag. Okay, so this time you need to write down the words here. 
So let's do the first one together. World. That's right. World. Make sure to touch this line with the letters, the long letters. Okay, let's quickly do the next one together. Peace. Remember the P goes lower. Like this. Okay, you can finish the rest on your own. And let's quickly look at the talk time. Why do you think it's important that there is a government to make fair rules for the people? Okay, why do you think we need to have a government? Why do we need rules? What do you think? You can think about it. When you finish thinking, let's look at thankful time. Say or write on a colored cardstock leaf one thing you're thankful for today. Okay, so this one again, you can think what is something that you enjoyed today or something good, something that God gave you that you can be thankful for. Think about it and write down your answer. If you finished, let's move on. Review time. It's time to think back over this week of your quest and see what you've learned so far. Talk time. What are some of the things you enjoyed most this week? What did you like learning about? What was fun? What did you enjoy this week? So you can think about it. And if you finished thinking about it, let's look at the word collector. Can you find all the yellow highlighted words from the week for your word collector? Go back through this week's pages and write those words on your three times five cards. Can you read the words or can you spell them if your teacher says them out loud? So remember, you need to um, you need to learn the yellow highlighted words from the week. So you can learn them by writing them down. This always helps, and you can have cards to remember how to write them. So check if you remember all the words for this week. Welcome to lesson two, page 29. Today we'll be talking about Australia. Let's read. This week, we'll be traveling to Australia in a bathyscaphe. This is a bathyscaphe. An underwater vehicle with a name that means deep vessel. Let's get ready to go to the land down under. The land down under means Australia. If you look at your map, where is Australia? Can you see it? Australia is here. This is for lesson number two. Let's continue. People traveled to the mainland of Australia a long time ago, making them some of the first sailing explorers in the world. So on this part, you can see a boat with sails. This is how the people came to Australia. Here's Australia. They came with the sailboats. While it's easy to think of these settlers as one group of people, 
the language family groups that began with Babel were traveling all over the world at this time. The early settlers of Australia are today often called Aboriginals, like these people. They were mostly nomads at first, which is someone who has no permanent house, finding their food as they move from place to place rather than farming. Soon, some of them began to settle down. That means that th these people, called nomads, they would go from one place to the next but they would never really stay in one place they always went to a new place but one day it says that they began to settle down so suddenly they decided okay i'm not going to move more but i am going to stay here and I will not move. I will stay in this place. At that time, their homes were often built of stone and some, of, and some were even made of volcanic rock. Do you know what that is? That is the rock that comes from the volcano. Most groups hunted with spears. Here you see someone holding a spear and heavy boomerangs, often eating the wild kangaroos for their food. Yes, kangaroos! You know what kangaroos are, right? Things began to change in 1788, which is when the first European people began coming to Australia. The first of these people who came set up places for prisoners who were brought here on ships. Now there are people from all over the world living in Australia. All right, so there were prisoners. You know what a prisoner is? Someone who is not free to go anywhere. So here I am drawing a picture of what a prisoner looks like. They are often behind bars and they can't go anywhere. Okay, so here you see a prisoner. Australia is mostly flat land called plateau with some grasslands and deserts. So that means there are not many mountains, okay? You would not find this much in Australia, but it is mainly flat, flat land, okay? English is the main language spoken here, but there are more than 250 different Aboriginal or native languages spoken too. Some of the main things produced in Australia are beef, wheat, fruit, wool, and diamonds. Because Australia is a democracy, that means that people vote for leaders here. One thing a bit different here is that if you don't vote, you can be fined, which means you have to pay money for not voting. So you have to vote, otherwise you need to pay money. On to other things. Did you know that Lake Eyre is Australia's largest lake? It's very salty, with as much salt as the sea when it fills. And it is often only five feet deep. Five feet is the same as 1.5 meters. So that's not very deep. But in very rainy seasons, it fills to about 15 feet deep. Here again, you can see 15 feet is a little bit more, 4.6 meters. The lake is actually below sea level. And then, and when the lake floods, thousands of birds come here, though no one but God seems to know how they can realize the water is rising. Okay, so when 
when the lake floods so let, let's say here is the lake this is the lake and this is the land so when it floods that means the lake level rises it's higher and it floods and it goes much further in the land so the lake is here now all the way here so at that time the the birds come to the lake Okay, time for the next page. So, do you like highly poisonous creatures? Poisonous means that if they, if they sting you or touch you, you will be in great pain. Your body will be very painful and sometimes you can even die because of the poison. So, do you like highly poisonous creatures? If you said yes, well, there are a bunch in Australia. And if you said no, well, there are still a bunch in Australia. In the ocean surrounding the country are things like a stinging stonefish, which looks like a rock. You can see a picture of the stinging stonefish here. The box jellyfish and the southern blue ringed octopus. You can see the blue ringed octopus here. The world's most ven venomous snake is in the desert and it's known as the inland taipan. One of the most dangerous spiders in the world lives here. That would be the Sydney funnel web spider. This is the most dangerous spider in the world. Does it look scary? Ooh. With these and so many other poisonous animals here, it's odd to realize that more people are hurt by honeybees than almost any other creature. It's simply because there are so many, and if you are allergic, their sting can really hurt you. Isn't that interesting that most people are hurt by, by bees? By simple honeybees? Like this? Yeah, very strange. So here is here is a honeybee. So sometimes people can be very allergic to their sting and so it's really hurtful for them. Talk time on the next page. What interesting things have you learned about Australia? that you would want to tell a friend. So you can think about it. What was the most interesting thing? And here you can see also some more pictures. Here's a bathyscape. This is what it looks like in the countryside and on the beach. And here you can see some of the famous animals in Australia the kangaroo and the koala. So if you've answered this question, let's move to thankful time. Say or write on a colored cardstock leaf one thing you're thankful for today. Again, you can think of something that you're thankful for and write it down. Time for lesson two, exercise two, day seven. It's God's creation time. There are many times the Bible uses God's world to teach us how to know right from wrong. As a partridge that broods but does not hatch, so is he who gets riches but not by right. It will leave him in the midst of his days, and at the end he will be a fool. Jeremiah 17, 11. 
Here is a partridge. It was thought that partridges would sit on another bird's eggs. When the eggs hatched, the young birds would eventually fly away. The verse then talks about how some people take money that is not theirs and get riches from stealing. But the wealth will be gone one day because it was stolen and not earned. So we should learn to work hard for what is ours and find God's blessing. Okay. Now, language time. The Italian word for your week is adio, and it means goodbye. So remember, adio, adio. Thankful time. Say or write on a colored cardstock leaf one thing you're thankful for today. What are you thankful for today? Take some time to write it down. Now we're on page 34. It's the word find time. Find the following words about Australia in the word find puzzle. Here are the words. Australia, boat, nomad, air, desert, stonefish, diamonds, spider. Okay, so look through the words. Can you see any word already? I will give you one as a hint and you need to find the rest on your own. So here we've got the word boat and this word is here. Great! Can you find the others now? Now on page 35, it's flag time! The Australian flag is blue with the flag from the United Kingdom in the top corner. This is the flag of the United Kingdom and a large seven-pointed star on the lower half of the same side here. The star depicts one point for each of the six original states and one representing all of Australia's territories. On the side farthest from the pole is the Southern Cross constellation in white with one small five-pointed star and four larger seven-pointed stars. You can see this constellation in the night sky over Australia. This constellation. Okay, so you can color this flag and collect this flag. Now it's government time. What is the capital of Australia? The capital is Canberra. What is the type of government? It's a constitutional monarchy. Take time for your 1 Timothy 2, 1 to 2 prayer for the leaders of Australia. So you can Open your Bible here, 1 Timothy 2, 1 to 2, and pray for the leaders of Australia. When you've done that, it's thankful time. And again, you can say or write on a colored cardstock leaf one thing you're thankful for today. Great. That's it for today. Welcome to lesson three. Today we're going to talk about New Zealand. 
So let's read together. Life jackets on. It's time to go from Australia to New Zealand on our jet ski. Seems like a good day for it, so let's get going. Okay, what is a life jacket? He is wearing a life jacket right here. And what is a jet ski? This is a jet ski. So you see it can go on the water and you can, it's as if you are riding a car or a bike but on the water. And then it says we're going from Australia to New Zealand. Here you can see a map. Can you see which one is Australia, which one is New Zealand? Yes, so this one is Australia, the big, the big one. And here is New Zealand. So it's not that far. What is New Zealand like, you ask? Well, it is made up of a North Island and a South Island. Here is the North Island and here is the South Island. And because there is a lot of volcanic soil here, the soil is very good for growing plants, including lush grass for the sheep and cattle. So there's a lot of grass, a very good grass in New Zealand and there are a lot of sheep too and cattle. The volcanic activity also means there are a lot of geysers and hot springs from the heat underground. So what is a, a geyser? It looks a little bit like this. So there are rocks and maybe, maybe there's some water here. There are all these rocks up here and from the rocks there are some kind of little openings and from those openings come suddenly water water comes out like this it, this is not a tree this is water so the water comes out and it can be very hot very hot water and uh, yeah, it comes out and it looks a bit like a cloud when it comes out. It's very fast. The use of wool from sheep for clothing is very important here. And it shows because there are many more sheep than people. Yes, in New Zealand there are a lot and a lot of sheep. More sheep than people. Every nation has a capital city or more than one capital. And Wellington is the capital of New Zealand, the southernmost national capital in the whole world. That means that no other nation's capital is further south on the earth. And even though it is the closest of any country capital to Antarctica, the weather is actually very mild. Okay, so New Zealand is actually very much towards the south so it's very close to antarctica antarctica is quite low it is somewhere here this is antarctica so it is very south okay Oh, and New Zealand was actually the first country in the world to give all women the right to vote in 1893. Okay, that's quite a nice thing, right? Let's look at the next page. When we talk about products that certain countries provide, you might wonder what comes from New Zealand. Well, this wonderful island nation provides a lot of the wood for paper and buildings. Now, at one time, there were a lot of kauri trees that were cut down. Here you see a picture of a kauri tree. What is so bad about that is that these take about a thousand years to mature, living around 2000 years. Wow, that's a long time that these trees can live. These amazing trees are being protected now. 
Mount Everest is the highest mountain in the world. And while it is not in New Zealand, the first person to climb up Mount Everest was from Auckland, New Zealand. His name was Sir Edmund Hillary. You can see him here. And he climbed up the mountain in 1953. He practiced for his climb by going up our rocky Mount Cook here. You see a picture of the mountain in New Zealand? Sometimes you can learn to climb a big mountain by starting to practice on smaller mountains. Always good to know. So if you want to try to climb Mount Everest, which is very high. Okay, this doesn't look like Mount Everest, but it's a very high mountain. Very high. It's better to start with a smaller mountain. And then maybe you will try with a higher mountain and then still higher until you can try to climb Mount Everest. Let's look at the next page. So, God has made many wondrous things for us to see around the world. If you go to Waitomo Caves on the North Island, you can see the amazing glow worms. Here you can see in the cave there are so many beautiful lights and they actually come from worms. The worms look a little bit like, like this. So here are what glow worms look like and they have a, they have a light at the end of, of them that glows like this. So the lights that you see here come from these worms. Thousands of these beautiful creatures of God light up the cave while you travel through it. One of many other beautiful things to see in this country is Hagley Park in Christchurch, a wonderful park with gorgeous gardens. It was created in 1855 so people could enjoy trees and flowers and other wonders anytime they wanted. So take a look at the pictures. Here you can see pictures of Hagley Park. Isn't it beautiful with all the flowers and the trees? Very beautiful. Now it's activity time. Make a cave entrance into your room that you have to crawl inside through to get inside. Here is a little cave that this girl made in her room. You can make it from blankets draped over chairs or from large cardboard boxes or completely from your own imagination. Don't forget to bring a flashlight. So if you want to try this at home in your room, you can make this kind of cave with blankets and you can add lights if you like and remember to bring your flashlight. Talk time. What is something big you would like to do one day that maybe taking small steps now can get you started? So remember what we talked about climbing the mountain it's better to start with a small mountain before climbing the really big mountain, right? So what is something that you want to do? Something big like this mountain? But first you need to climb a little mountain. What could it be? You can think about it and talk with someone if, if someone is sitting next to you. And when you're done, let's look at thankful time. Say or write on a colored cardstock leaf one thing you're thankful for today. 
What are you thankful for? Take time to think about it and write it on the colored cardstock leaf. Okay, page 43, God's creation time. Did you know that God cares about the animals he created and he wants us to as well? There is a proverb that talks about this and a proverb is just a special saying that gives you wisdom. Let's read it together. A righteous man regards the life of his animal, but the tender mercies of the wicked are cruel. Proverbs 12.10 the righteous or good man who loves God takes care of the animals that he has. But even what wicked people think is kind ends up being cruel or mean. We can take care of our pets and be kind to them to show the kindness God wants in us for others as well. Do you have pets? Do you have cats or dogs or like this rabbit? Do you have pets? If you do, or if you see animals in your life, what do you have to do according to this proverb? You have to take good care of them. You need to take good care of your animals. So how can you do that? Now, language time. The Italian word for your week is per favore. And it means please. So let's say it again together. Per favore. Okay. Please. Good job. Now it's time for the word find time. Find the following New Zealand words in the word find puzzle. Here are the words. Island, Kauri, Springs, Mountain, Wood, Caves, Paper, Glowworm. Can you see any word in this word puzzle? You can search and I will give you one. Okay, I will give you one word. The word is springs. Did you see it? Yes, springs. Now you can look at the rest of the word puzzle and see if you can find all the words. When you're done, let's move on to talk time. How could someone show kindness to his or her pets. Okay, how can you show kindness to, to a cat, for example, or maybe a dog? How can you show kindness to your pets? Think about it. What is a good way to do that? And when you finished thinking about what you can do, let's move on to thankful time. Say or write on a colored cardstock leaf one thing you're thankful for today. So again, take the time to think about what you are thankful for. And now is flag time. The flag of New Zealand is blue with the flag of the United Kingdom in the upper corner. Does this remind you the flag of Australia? So it's a little different, but we also have the flag of the United Kingdom up in this corner. There are also four red five pointed stars with white edges centered on the outer half of the flag as you can see here or 
here. The stars represent the Southern Cross constellation, the most familiar star pattern in the Southern Hemisphere. So you can look at this flag and try to color it in the same way as this flag here. Government time. So what is the capital of New Zealand? The capital is Wellington. What is the type of government? It is a constitutional monarchy. Now take time for your first Timothy 2, 1 to 2 prayer for the leaders of New Zealand. Take a little time to pray for New Zealand. And again, we have the thankful time. So you can say or write on a colored cardstock leaf one thing you're thankful for today. When you have finished doing your thankful time, you can also do the next pages. You need to write down some words and write down your diary and you can do that alone. So you can do that the next day or another day, or you can do it now. But remember to fill in the next pages too before lesson four. Okay, great. See you in the next lesson.